Hmm. 99 gold for some max health. This is an interesting option here at the start. Got a Hexaghost as our act boss. Sort of intimidating wall of early elites here. Now we must face one of these four creatures. And anytime you encounter a situation... Actually, no, there's a way through. Excuse me, look at this. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting option. Actually, uh, then I really like getting to this fire, because there's either the option of opting into the red elite here, or you can path around and then face the elite with more preparation. Actually, rather like that quite a lot. Hmm. If I was inclined, this would also be an acceptable time to boss swap, I suppose. I don't think we ever go for the Burning Elite. So if I'm taking the Trade My Gold, then I'd want to take this as my opening. Up these few floors to get to the fire. Otherwise, there's the option to go to a shop and maybe remove an early strike. But I'm thinking if, if we just take a whole bunch of health, that we'll be able to have a more successful overall Act 1. And Max Health ends up being a very useful resource overall. You can think of max health as uh, a healing resource, ultimately. You heal based on your max HP when you transition between acts. Uh, either to full health if you're below Ascension 5, or 75% of the health that you're missing above Ascension 5. You also heal based on your max health from events, and anytime you rest, it's a 30% of your max health heal. So with more max health equals more healing. I think I prefer that to the boss swap. I have a hard time giving up the Ring of the Snake on the Silent. I think she's really quite dependent um, on the additional initial card draw to overcome the additional starting cards that she is saddled with. And we did quite a few boss swaps on Silent last month, which were not particularly successful for her, unfortunately. Am I getting three strikes? One nipper knows. Did we just pay 99 gold for six max health? Yes, ultimately. That is what we chose to do. Uh-oh. If I defend, defend survivor here and take zero, then there's a risk that I draw three defends next turn. I think the safe line is strike one time, survivor defend, take three here. Guarantee we kill next turn. First Floor Blade Dance versus First Floor Catalyst. Well, Catalyst is not a card that does anything on its own, whereas Blade Dance is pretty good on Floor 1. Yeah, compared to... That's, so that's compared to taking the, the 6 max star and keeping the 99 gold, which was also an option. First floor outmaneuver. Can't say I've ever tried that. Probably never will. It's actually better to play two strikes than it was to play the blade dance. Oops. That's funny, actually. Command's a little out of date. Let's see, we just incremented Watcher. Or wait, no, that is correct, never mind. No, we just incremented Ironclad, excuse me, we're, we're on rotating four. That's right. Me poison stab, sneaky strike. Hmm. Fighting Hexaghost, I'm definitely inclined to take a poison card against Hexaghost. That way, if we see another one, we have a way to answer that fight. Absolutely need to make sure, as Silent in particular, 
that you are keeping your act boss in mind with your card picks. Applying these is pretty broadly useful too. The extra energy next turn can do all sorts of fun stuff. But yeah, let's grab that poison staff. Our first event is just another combat. That does happen a small percentage of the time. Able to fully block and do quite a lot of damage here. Beautiful fight. Blade Dance really paying off. <clears throat> Second Poison Staff being offered. It's an interesting way to get there. That would definitely let me take the red additional elite if I picked up a second Poison Stab. Very good card against Grumlin Knob specifically, who is a big danger for us in Act 1. But two Poison Stabs is definitely something we'll regret having later in the run, so it's only going to be worth it if we are able... to get some good relics immediately. Otherwise, I think I'd more broadly rather have that Piercing Whale. But the Piercing Whale doesn't prepare me for this floor. All right, let's try it. Let's go Poison Stab, and it'll take the extra lead. I, I feel like that's got to be worth it, ultimately. Bottom mini strawberry for a reason, right? Striker defend here, that's the question. Red Slaver is a fight you gotta end quickly, and you can have a, a really serious punishment for not doing so. So I think I'll take the two damage to play one more strike here. Because the entangle is nasty, because the vulnerable is nasty. Kill next turn. And look at that. If I hadn't played that strike, we'd be taking this hit here. Because we'd be just a little bit short. We'd be actually one damage short without having that strike played earlier in the fight. Now there's a card to kill elites with. Dash, two cost, 10 block, 10 damage. Perfect. Now we will easily traverse this path and easily defeat this elite. And trade some of the max health we've gained for the golden idol? Hmm. So at the start of the game, I traded money for max health. Now I'm going to trade max health for money? Yeah. What a strange world. <laughs> I like it, though. Not sure if I should upgrade dash or neutralize. Dash is a nice plus three block, plus three damage. Whereas the neutralize makes our weak and last one more turn. That can be quite helpful too. A pretty poison stab could be somewhat reasonable also. Yeah, given that we we're in a hexaghost act, it could have been correct to lose the current health. I'm definitely not feeling like we're in a position where I'm able to do that at the moment. Neutralize definitely does seem like the better upgrade in the long term, but I'm not looking at the better long term upgrade right now. I'm looking at the better right now upgrade, which I think is ultimately Dash. Although that doesn't help me against three sentries, but I could suppose the Neutralize upgrade doesn't either. And it's a moot point, as the Lagavulin is our first opponent. <clears throat> With double poison stab on turn one, I am definitely waking up on turn one. Take advantage of that damage per turn the major way we're going to win the fight. That's a bit of an oof, but next turn looks good. Just dash, survivor. 
Question is, can we kill in two turns from here? It's all up to the draws. Getting Blade Dance on this turn was very helpful. But I think we're going to be just shy. We'll have to save. Uh, have to block for one more turn. Oh, jeez. Wait. No, we're just shy. We're two damage short. Ouch. It's unfortunate. Hmm. Well, that's all right. We get ourselves a Tingsha. Doing damage whenever we discard a card. And another chance at a Piercing Whale here. Or if we want more Poison and Weaken, we can take a Crippling Cloud. Crippling Cloud's pretty dang good also. Hard to choose between these two. I suppose with Hexaghost Looming, I do want the card that does Poison more. Should not disregard Accuracy either. Accuracy makes this Blade Dance do a lot more damage. Hmm, tough choice. I think I'm gonna go with taking and upgrading this Crippling Cloud. But like I said, it's a difficult choice here. Any of those three would have been justifiable picks. Question card is here to give us more options from future card rewards. That could lead to finding a lot of good stuff later on in the run. I really like getting question card before my first act boss in particular. Sentries are here. Actually a rather difficult fight for us with Crippling Cloud and Dash being drawn on the same hand. Notably Crippling Cloud doesn't do any poison if the enemies have artifact. So I think I'll actually draw back into that. Go Dash Poison Stab on this one. I have to speed push next turn. I would say that's almost exactly what I'm going to do. I could also just poison stab, strike, strike, and kill this sentry, right? That's six, six, nine, 21 damage kills you. Hmm. Yeah, and then the fight's less advanced. I think that's better. Trade 10 health here. Okay, so far, so decent. Let's strip artifact off the one with more health at this point. If I draw a Crippling Cloud, I want the poison to go on this one. Mm, I did that to myself. Might still be in it, though. We are. Okay. Didn't die. Yet. But we're, we're a little ways away from salvation. Get a Juzu bracelet, actually. Well, hmm. and a cutting potion. And another crippling cloud. There's also dagger throw with Tingsha. Interesting. Definitely would not mind a dagger throw right now. I think our best odds are still going this way. <clears throat> we'll have to get through two fights on three health. But then we get to rest and upgrade before Hexaghost. 
<clears throat> we have two pretty good potions as well, so I think, honestly, our odds are pretty good here of prevailing in these two fights, especially if one of them is this jump. Definitely going to play dash to block. And I suppose Poison Stab over Blade Dance? They're pretty similar. May have to use one of the potions next turn, depending on the draw here. Although hopefully we just draw double defend and he's doing the weakened move. That is also acceptable. Um, hmm. use one of the potions here. I think I would like it to be the speed potion. That way I get to dagger throw for 12 damage here. Bring him to 17. We kill next turn easily. With this draw, whatever this is. Just like this. Could have achieved the same result by using the cunning potion. But I think the cunning potion is the better potion. It's here. <laughs> Discard your hand, add a shiv to your hand for each card discarded. Interesting. With Tingsha. Very interesting. Seven damage per card. That's currently equivalent to a fiend fire in damage. Let's give it a shot. Uh-oh. Well, that's a problem. You know? Definitely describe that as a problem. Technically, one more damage if I discard the shivs, right? I don't think we have enough damage to kill them both. Although, let me double check. If I play Cunning Potion Storm of Steel, I would discard nine cards and get nine shivs. So nine times four for the shivs, 36 damage from shivs plus 27 damage from Tingsha, total 63, not enough to kill them both. Put Crippling Cloud first. That would be better, but not enough to kill them both. No. I think we have to go defend, defend. Cunning Pot. Then Storm of Steel. Pray very hard. Praying successful. Okay, we lived. We are the silent who lived. We're alive. And I like that acrobatics quite a bit, actually. Backflip is also pretty good. Go acro. Could also go with poison stacking here. I'm gonna go with the acrobatics for the uh, Tingsha interaction. We will upgrade and then go to the shop, I guess. What would I like to upgrade? Acrobatics is a good upgrade. Oddly enough, Storm of Steel would be a decent upgrade.
one of the poison stabs is a decent upgrade for the Hexaghost fight. I don't think we need the Neutralize upgrade because of the Crippling Cloud, though. Maybe that's not true. Wouldn't even mind upgrading Survivor. I think this can often be a really helpful card for uh, making your silent runs feel better in Act 2, especially. How often do I get to say that? This is a good Storm of Steel upgrade. Plus two per card, it's not that bad. But you can do more damage by just having another card in hand, right? I'll upgrade the acro. Ah. It begins. Calculated Gamble is here, letting us discard our entire hand. Let's draw that many anew. I also see that Ori is here, letting us look at and potentially add up to five additional card rewards to our deck. That could be very impactful also. Or I could simply remove a card. Either way, I'll be resting at the rest site. I'm not going to fight Hexagos to the one hit point. Although, it'd be kind of tempting. I think it'd be silly. So, do I look at the orrery? We're only going to see unupgraded cards, so the question is, what are we looking to, to see there? Other copies of Calculated Gamble, definitely. Powers would be cool. I'd take a Footwork, I'd take a Tools of the Trade. Malaise would be good. Piercing Whale would be good. Okay, yeah, lots of stuff that would be good. Reflexes would be ah. good. There's one. Another dash, another Crippling Cloud. Backflip's not bad. Dagger Throw's not bad. These are all pretty bad. Oh yeah, it's a question card Ori, by the way. Catalyst and Alchemize, oh my. Now there's a tough choice. I suppose Finisher is not that bad, but the main problem with Finisher, Finisher does not work with Storm of Steel, one. Because you have to discard the Finisher to play it. And I think we'll all too often draw it on its own. I do like the backflip, though. I think I'm gonna go a reflex, backflip. Which discard do I have? One, two. We're about to get a calculated gamble. Storm of Steel is also discard. And I oddly want to take the Alchemize. Catalyst seems pretty good though for later. But Tinksh is gonna provide a ton of damage currently. I don't feel like I need this Catalyst. I'd rather actually have the potion creation. Feels weird. Maybe that. Ah. Onwards. Certainly we're gonna beat Hexaghost without a catalyst. That should be easy enough to do. Especially with an opening hand like this. Shift on, nerd. Do I need the potion? Doesn't look like it. Not with 12 poison on turn two. Note, Hexaghost's turn two attack is based on your current health. So the less health you enter this fight with, the lower Hexaghost's initial attack. At that point, it's a kind of damage race between you and the ghosts. Hexaghost attacks for pretty small amounts during the uh, opening turns of the fight, but scales up pretty quickly over time. It's poison o'clock. You're invited.
starting to think maybe I should have used this poison potion after all. I suppose it's not too late to... Well, no, I've got plenty... Um, it's more about next turn, actually. If I die next turn, there's nothing the poison potion can change. I'm a little bit worried that we're not going to draw a dash. Okay, we're fine. Didn't die. Barely. Good work, me. Pretty close, though. Get four rare cards offered to us, three attacks, finale, die die die, and glass knife. All slightly different purposes. Finale is all about can you get your draw pile to have the right number of cards in it, which this deck is almost able to do, actually. If we got a runic pyramid, we would be. Whereas die 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 is unconditional, just do some damage to everybody, and that could be very helpful. Glass Knife does a lot of damage to a target of your choice, but gets worse with each play, or after image is blocked per card, and that's pretty good in a deck that's got, uh, well, this sort of stuff going on. Dwarven Heart, thank you so much for two months of support. Appreciate you keeping it cozy. I think I am personally feeling this after image. Goes nicely with, uh, with what we've got going on. Helps augment our block just a little bit, and will definitely encourage Tingsha nonsense to occur. Let's do it. I'll also take the skill potion over the poison potion. And now we're gaining energy. Three different ways to get there. Sozu prevents us from getting potions. That's pretty disastrous with the alchemize of the deck. Dome prevents us from seeing what the enemies are doing. That definitely feels a bit awkward. Or Philosopher's Stone gives enemies additional strength. Could be a problem, but not that much of a problem. At least, that's my hope. Certainly, we're not worried about birds. And I think we've got the blocking game down. We've got lots of access to weaken. This feels like the best option for me, personally. The Philosopher's Stone over the Runic Dome. It's never Sozu, of course. Can we survive any of this? I don't know. There are elites all over the place. They are scary, but we do have four energy per turn. And a Tingsha. And a question card. Going to a shop early would mostly be for the purpose of removing a strike, which is actually a very valuable thing to do. There are way too many strikes in this deck at the moment. So actually going this way is not unreasonable. Okay, let's try that. I don't want to get in too many fights right away. We should be on average pretty high performing in the combats my hope, anyhow. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a lot better than I thought it would be, quite frankly. Good stuff. Upgraded Piercing Whale, just in time for Act 2. Welcome. Those backflip, uh, backflip and Crippling Cloud aren't terrible either, and I would take either of these if they were upgraded and the Piercing Whale was not. But with the upgrade on the Piercing Whale, easy pick. Hmm, Concentrate does damage. Curious. Main thing I'm here for, though, is just a card removal, and that's what I'll do. Get that strike out of my deck. Ah. 
greetings. Stinky parasite. Hmm. Free malaise, oh boy. This will go. Ravage malaise. better than I thought, actually. So far. Another acrobatics for more card draw while also causing us to discard more stuff? That's pretty hard to turn down. I think escape plan also could be part of a balanced breakfast, but only if we had dexterity to go with. So far, Tingshu's at 139 damage. It's going to get a lot bigger than that as we go forward, too. Upgrade a card. Well, don't mind if I do. Basically, all my upgrades are going to go into uh, card draw upgrades right now. Oh man, do we get plus three strength on turn one? Or do I transform two strikes into two different cards? What a choice here. This Jax guy is always such a good event to run into in Act 2. He's got three options and almost always at least one of the three are very good. Hard to go wrong with transforming starter cards. But, when you have a 7 card turn 1 and a bunch of shivs, and a bunch of Act 2 elites coming up, it definitely is tempting to gain plus strength on turn 1. That can yield a lot of damage, a lot of, a lot of winning. I would say it's almost never Jax here. Jax trades our health for strength. The strength gain is pretty useful, but it's another card we have to draw through, and the health loss is a bit problematic. Krogzar asks, if we got Clockwork Souvenir, would I keep the mutagenic strength? Yes. Clockwork Souvenir would do it. The one artifact, the sort of combat relic. Which could also prevent us from blocking Vulnerable on uh, Heart. Kind of interesting. I think I am going to take the Strength on turn one. I really feel like we're going to want that bonus damage. In a big way here. And I think with that plus three Strength, we get to tackle this Elite now. Nice try, nerd. I actually don't even need to use the piercing whale. I don't think I will, then. Perhaps should have explosive potions. Do that later. Hmm. 
Okay, now we use the explosive potion. Or one of them, anyway. Survivor Storm of Steel? Probably the best way to save health here. We could also go Acrobatic Storm of Steel. But that will be less block and more damage. Yeah, get him. More explosions. Easily here. All right, great fight. Get ourselves a bottled flame, allowing us to pick an attack to be in our opening hand. Can't say I'm very happy with that. But I am glad that we beat the Elite. I am glad we got the money and the potion. And I'm probably not going to take backstab. I could bottle Riddle with Strength, having plus three strength for 30 damage on turn one. His chat's highlight there. That's that's an intriguing option. That's an intriguing option. We could also do the bottle backstab meme. Which isn't even that bad, honestly. We do have plus three strength. I think I'm gonna say no to all of that though. No, no, no. No thanks. Upgrades to free. I think we need this upgraded first. Meat on the bone. If we're at or below half after combat, heal 12. Yes, please. Currently, we have no source of healing, so if I were to take severe damage, this would be the only thing between me and the devastation. Let's go this way. Two more elites, two more upgrades. But can we beat a Book of Stabbing with plus one strength? That's the question. Answer may surprise you. Ding! You can use the energy potion to drink the Alchemize now. In addition to playing one more strike. I think I'll do that. Ooh, Rija. Well, I'd say that was a pretty good turn one against Book of Stabbing. Question is, can we keep it up? He says unlikely. Half health for us is 35, so if I can find a way to take two damage here, I really should do that. That way we'll heal 12 after this fight from the meat on the bone. We get ginger, meaning we're immune to weaken. And there's a Tools the Trade, allowing us to draw and discard one card each turn. Which is exactly what Tingxia wants to hear. Welcome. Long line of hooded figures offer us a sharp knife. 
Don't have a lot of time to charge this Ritual Dagger. Ritual Dagger gets better the earlier in the act you're offered it, and this is pretty late. So I'll take 50 gold instead. If you play 10 copies of Tools of the Trade, I wouldn't describe the resulting situation as a soft lock. You'll draw and then discard all 10 of your cards each turn. You can still do stuff with potions, um, and we would do 30 damage per turn with Tingsha, but yeah, you'd be pretty, pretty screwed at that point. You could also discard reflexes to draw real cards. That's also true. I was trying to debate if I use the regen potion here. I think we're just going to rely on meat on the bone. Come on, Sneko. Zero cost infinite. Heck yeah. And I'll just keep these two potions. Get a duplication potion. That's a very good potion. Could take a yet another acrobatics. I think two is enough at the moment. I want to get the tools, the trade, and the alchemize upgraded, probably. Some cost reductions sprinkled in here. Maybe you wanted to keep that explosive pot for this elite, actually. Since that could be three slavers. Oh well. We have not seen tough bandages yet. If we could find them, that would be very nice. Very greatly appreciated. This is looking like Crippling Cloud, then Storm of Steel. Then I can sprinkle damage appropriately. That gets the poison started on the leader. We'll kill both these minions. That's gotta be right. Piercing Whale next turn if we get attacked. Which we did. Good. Good time to get attacked. Okay, we blocked. Maybe a few more turns till leader is killed. Let's kill this wizard. Probably directly target the leader once this wizard is dead. Gamba Gamba. Well, this has gone better than expected. don't want to play any more cards because I want to get that last one point of regen. Get a mummy hand. If we play a power card, something in a hand becomes free. And here, 
at long last is an Envenom at the same time as the Mummified Hand to really tie this whole deck together. Suddenly, these Poison Stabs and, and these Shivs are actually part of the same archetype now. It's all working together. Beautiful. Could make it cheaper. I think I'll make the Alchemize free. Now it won't be a target for Mummy Hand, which could be very important, actually. That's true, we couldn't afford the sadistic nature in the shop, but there's still time. So Venom's also going to be very helpful for removing artifact from Bronze Automaton. Turn one. I guess I'll block. This is also blocking, though. Calculated Gamble, which is actually one of my best damage cards, too. Stinker. Just mundanity in the draw pile. Focus on putting poison on the boss for the moment. Wanted that dash. Piercing Whale is perfect on this turn, though. That'll solve our block conundrum here. Basically, entirely. We can damage the one who has my calculated gamble. Block the rest, block the rest. Okay. So Hyper Beam will be next turn. That could be a slight problem. Unless... Yeah, you died of poison, and therefore I get the calculated gamble for next turn. Put the rest of the damage on the boss here. Okay, managed to clear things up a bit. Perfect timing on the neutralized draw. Fortunately, I don't have any real block cards, so... That's fun. It's technically Storm of Steel is a really good block card, because... Every shiv blocks for one. This worked out pretty well, though. Perfect meat on the bone range. Excellent play. Oh my. Choices, choices. Four rare powers. I guess the mummy hand really wants to put in some work here. We can take a wraith form to make us intangible for a few turns. Thousand cuts. 
to make our card plays do damage, another after image to double our block per card, or another tools of the trade for more card drop per turn. I think I'm most inclined to take another after image. Really do need two in order to counteract beat of death on heart. And then from there we can do something like uh, lots of calculated gambles. I really do like Spire, it's true. Guilty as charged. And then some. I guess I'll take Power Potion over Energy Potion, because Power Potion does give us some energy after all. And whoa, what do we have here? Is that a Wrist Blade? Making our Storm of Steel do even more damage? There's also some very good contend contending attitude. Very good reason to consider the Empty Cage, letting us remove two strikes from this deck so that we can focus on our draw and discard effects as our primary source of everything. In fact, the Wrist Blade's not even necessarily that much additional damage. The more I think of it, the more I actually really do like Empty Cage here. We're already on four energy, and with the Mummified Hand, we don't need more than that, really. We just want to make sure that we're able to consistently get useful cards. And that means not strike. Cool. Stunk two strikes. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. And then another strike. What, five elites, hello? How strong are we? That's a ridiculous path. I mean, meat on the bone definitely makes something like that kind of viable. Certainly we'll be visiting this shop regardless. Let's start there. More tools, more trade. The power. Plasma Fair, thank you so much for five months. Let's keep it cozy. Ding. Catalyst is here, or a Piercing Whale Plus is here. I think we should probably take this Catalyst and upgrade it. I like that. That will send our damage into the stratosphere for specific late game threats. Which is good stuff. Here, you're poisoned now. Excellent fight. I don't think that visiting shops is a good way to try to find tough bandages. Shops are not guaranteed to offer rare relics. And so we're about as likely to see bandages by visiting a store as we are from getting a relic by any other source. Ding ding! It's a 640 total damage now, by the way. These are all no thanks. 
Rhyming Mass could be a bit of a challenge. That it was one rare, one common, one shop relic in the shop. No, it's two random rarity relics and one shop relic. The first two relics are not guaranteed to be anything in particular. Actually quite like a gambler's brew. Let's keep things as they are for the moment. Gamble. Oh no. Please don't do that. Thank you. turned out fine in the end. Hey there, Strivius. A smoke bomb potion truthfully doesn't have a whole lot of um, positive use cases during a normal run of Slay the Spire. However, I will say Smoke Bomb's best use is if you're trying to play Spire quickly, doing any kind of speed run. The Smoke Bomb can help you avoid a combat. Um, and therefore, speed up uh, your process considerably. It's gonna work. This can be... Do Blade Dance, then Storm of Seal. Still don't think this will kill, but it will be a ton of block. Let's stop here, actually. There's also a couple of glitches you can do with the Smoke Bomb Potion. There's well-laid plans, but there's a backflip plus. Gotta be the well-laid plans. Gotta be. Transient is here. Oof, it's sketchy turn one, too. Hmm. Awkward. Two poisons, pretty good. And we're finally able to retain a card. So I think we've got the situation semi under control now. Although only partially. concern is that we can't do that against Time Eater, and not really against Awaken One either.
Bye bye Another catalyst. Again, unupgraded. Hmm. Interesting option. I don't think that's actually helpful for me. If I can't upgrade it. I don't think I'm going to be taking that one. Well now. I'd say things just got very spicy for our opponents. Sneko Skull says, whenever you apply poison, apply one more. So now, Envenom would be two damage per attack. And then we're doubling or tripling that with Catalyst. <laughs> Could also take Sling of Courage to get us more strength in elite fights. And I'm going to do five elites in a row, so that's probably pretty good. And then I can also afford to remove a card on top of both of those. Pretty sweet. Don't mind if I do. All right, first elite, a Reptomancer. Discard this after image. Well, again, should have kept one of those shivs. Smoke bomb, in case we need it. It'd be useful next turn. You never know. Let's go after image. You're somewhere. Gamble. to kill the lower two daggers. I think we can do that with energy potion. Use strike to kill this one. Dash poison stab to kill this one. We do 15 plus 8 plus... Yeah, that's enough. Keep the venom, I guess. But I have a hard time actually getting that to play here. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Invenom and then Storm of Steel. Perfect. And after image even gets played too. What luck. This time I'm gonna remember to keep one shiv block with or kill a dagger with next turn. Important lesson to myself. Says an exclamation point path, path command. Oh, I know how that happened. Oh, that's so funny. Get that one later. Oh man, gambling chip says at the start of each combat we can discard any number of cards to hear a beautiful ringing sound in our ears. 
and we can also discard Tactician Plus to get a beautiful ringing sound in addition to energy. Yeah, I'm not sure what the, the terminology is for the stream elements one. One one little sneaky sneak by. Hmm. I'm gonna choose to upgrade Catalyst with my only upgrade available here. next turn, just in case it's the big hit, which I don't like. Very rude. But actually, we were fine. Huh. Well, that's nice. is here, allowing us to gain rest, strength at rest sites, something we probably won't be doing much of, unfortunately. I like Wraith Form, Crippling Cloud, Cloak and Anger, and Backflip. Wraith Form in particular is a really nice thing to have as just kind of a one-of, you know? Sure. I'll grab the Wraith Form to help secure our future, especially with his Ancient Potion. And we must take the Sapphire Key over the Shuriken, although the bonus damage on our attacks would be beautiful. Three more elites to go. Reptomancer number two is up first. Let's go one more tools here. Blade plans must make something else free, either Storm or Envenom. Envenom must make Storm free. Good turn one. Now I'm a ghost. Dead Branch. Whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card to your hand. Honestly, that sounds ridiculous. Let's do it. Like Sweet Plus or a Piercing Whale? Actually, a pretty good Lake Sweet Plus. 
Nah, it's one more piercing well. Is there such a thing as too much shiv? Only one way to find out. potions. Destroy him. Two tools of the trade. Wait, no, I don't. Yes! Grand finale. Dunk on, sir. A little bit more block from the thread needle. Another copy of Reflex Plus to get more cards into my hand. Heck yes. That is the best single card we could have found. Free upgrade even without uh, Toxic Egg. Pretty sweet. Burst can do some cool stuff here as well, but it's not upgraded for free like the Tingsha, uh, the Reflex is. What is upgraded for free Card that I duplicate. We could make a third reflex or a second tactician, but um, probably better off to double our calculated gamble, right? Discard your hand, then draw that many. That's got to be the one. Other option would be maybe third after image is possible or second wraith form, but I really like double calculated gamble. Ghastly Mirror appears in the shrine and collides into you. Alright, our final elite is the Super Nemesis. Double in Venom. Set up an acrobatics plus for next turn. It'll give us some energy. Another Acrobatics Plus or another Blade Dance. That's a tough call. I think I'll choose the Acro personally, but either of those could be winners. 
So many upgraded cards this run, man. Speed pot. And we have to recall here to get to Act 4. Dead Branch is a very, very silly relic if only you open your mind to its infinitely ridiculous possibilities. Can you believe we've barely used this catalyst? I think it'll get used in the heart fight, but so far, holy moly. I have to play some of these powers. Not all of them, but definitely had to play some. Already multi attacking me, huh? Spooky. We're also going to be randomly generating powers from the uh, dead branch constantly. That's a bit of a complicating factor. Successfully... something something. Yeah, you're gone, buddy. You're poisoned as heck. Please leave the battlefield now. Awaken one dies, presumably next turn. Um, hmm. That's a slight problem. Um. The Awakened One will perish this turn if I play the Keltrops. And only if I play the Keltrops. So I go Concentrate, Keltrops Defend here. And the Awakened One will die on the first hit. And still loses some of the strength. Also gives me another turn to, like, set up here. Form time. That sounds about right. Let's just win in three turns. Easy. What do you got?
Double Phantasmal Killer. More in Venom, sure. No reason not to. No longer intangible as of this turn, which is a little bit terrifying. Storm of Steel this year. went pretty well. All things considered, on to the next boss who is Donu and Deka. No time eater for us, so no restriction on cards per turn ever, thankfully. You just get to avoid that question entirely. Which will certainly make this a bit easier. That's the calculator gamble here. Venom kind of has to get played, but I'm a little concerned by the resulting situation. Acceptable damage, I guess. Not the right form yet. Storm of Steel, then. We'll rely on the random cards to uh, work in our favor here. And two after images, also putting in really good work here. And what's that? We just get to Storm of Steel again. Don't mind if I do. Seventeen attacks played so far. Get him. Dang. The power. Does after image work with dexterity? It does not. No, you only get one deck, uh, one block per card, regardless of any stats. GG. 
Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be found throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these shivs? Great question, Shaylin. Shaylin asks, if you have the specimen relic, which transfers poison when an enemy dies, and the surviving enemy has artifacts, yes, artifact will absorb the poison, all this one singular debuff, and the poison will be blocked. So no matter how much poison it is, one artifact charge will block all of it. Hello and welcome, Srizithalis. Sorry if I butchered your name there. And hello and welcome, Sackett, as well. I think this might actually be my last uh, Spire Run of the day. Feeling a little out of it at the moment. But, uh, no, uh, yeah, Srizithalis asks, Can't beat the level 3 boss for a week now, any... 5,000 IQ tips other than fight more elites and skip some cards. Proper potion use is a, a really, really big one. If you can take a couple of valuable potions into your Act 3 boss fights, uh, that can really help. A couple good ones for that are Strength or Dexterity potions, anything that boosts your stats for a whole fight. Uh, a Power potion can also be really useful to give you a, a bonus at the beginning of combat. Generally speaking, the Act 3 boss is testing your deck's ability to set up and oftentimes get some kind of powers in play in order to, so to, so to speak, scale up the strength of your deck. Um, the Awakened One boss thrives off of the player playing powers, but the other two bosses are really weak to playing a lot of power type cards and accumulating bonuses. So, do we want 7 health here? Do we want an upgrade on well-laid plans? Probably, yeah. Or, actually, Wraithform. Yeah. Let's upgrade Wraithform. And I could just take a second well-laid plans if I wanted to. I think I'd rather simply remove one card, the last strike in the deck. Grogazer says, the thing I learned most from the stream is take more cards. I'm an old MTG player, learned lean is better in magic. But in Slay the Spire, you have to build a deck of cards one card at a time. And crucially, you have to play the deck at every stack of completion. You, uh, In magic, you're used to a kind of theory crafting and building a deck and then playing with a complete, finished intentionally assembled a deck of cards. You never get to do that in Slay the Spire. You have to, at all times, slowly evolve your toolkit and improve that way. Could take another tactician. I don't think I want to. Oh boy, that's a pretty good turn one. I'm going to block, though. Don't worry about it. Locking is for jumps. You do Crippling Cloud, Piercing Well. Actually, I really like that. <laughs> Two additional wraith worms, really? Okay. Well, this seems to be going okay. Also, just kept the piercing well to block this turn. Do it with great forms. Got 
got enough of them after all. Tinks is up to almost 2,000. Wait till you see the at the end of the heart fight. It's gonna be great. Keep Storm of Steel? out of the way. Now we must deal with the other one. Relics to set up or anything? No, I don't. Yeah, this fight went swimmingly. We leave with two very good potions intact. We get a Mercury Hourglass for three damage per turn to the hearts. We're also offered a Caltrops if we felt like we needed more damage for the heart. I really don't feel like we do. Between the Catalyst and the Tingsha, we should have close to 200 damage per turn pretty quickly. And the main question then is, how do we survive against the heart's attacks? And the answer is Wraithworm will help a lot with that, as will the Piercing Whales. Okay, I'm not going to use the next potion. I want these two potions for the heart. Onwards. Oh, gambling chip. Oh, gambling chip. You are awesome. Beautiful turn. Do I block? Oh, I can't can't block the vulnerable with artifact. We actually talked about this because I have clockwork uh, mutagenic strength. If I drink the ancient potion, will absorb the strength down, not the uh, vulnerable from the heart. Oh. That's a big number for poison. This would go to 25, then 76. Big number. Okay. Too. I'm just gonna this card. Beat of Death is definitely eating me alive here. So I'm more intending to use the Ancient Potion with the Wraith form here to block the damage of the first attack cycle. Hopefully we draw it. After image, after image, plans, 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 a bit better.
now the poisoning begins. That brings it straight up to 200 poison. That means we win. GG. Good fight. So long. Farewell. Nice knowing you and all that. Bye bye. Final score on Tingsha 1753. A good year and GG. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.